Hello world, hello world. There we go. Uh, this, this won't be lightning, but I'll, I'll try to be enlightening. Um, uh, but first, is it too early to, to give a big round of applause for the organizers of this great event, isn't it? <laughs> Apparently not too early. Uh, I think it's, it's awesome that there's an event dedicated to documentation and it's thrilling to see uh, this group of people who want to spend two days uh, talking about the topic. Especially when it might, it might be news to everyone here, but there are some people who find documentation very boring. And I might have been one of those a couple of years ago. And so today I'd like to talk about uh, my journey uh, and what I saw uh, specifically in APIs and uh, how I realized how very important documentation is. So first, I've been at Programmable Web for four years and three of those as the editor. So I started somewhere, I don't know, around here with a world of 2,000 APIs, which we thought was a whole bunch. And now this is actually from last fall. Uh, there's going, there, really close to 9,000 APIs in the Programmable Web API directory. And so, of course, all of those APIs deserve documentation, and not all of those have the best documentation, and that probably is not a surprise to this crowd. But an API really is application programmer interface. It's sort of, it already is a way describing how two systems can interact but then what about the people operating those systems? And that's, that's where you all, perhaps we all, come in. And of course, there are a bunch of APIs, uh, and some from, we heard from Google earlier, over 100 APIs, and uh, all of those needing documentation. And names probably that are surprises to you up here, but then also maybe not so surprising, like Twitter and Facebook, which we sort of think of as key APIs. And I've seen a lot of uh, developer surveys, and always documentation is way up there as, this is a pain point. This is, you know, it's always documentation in general. We're gonna just pick on documentation. But there was one survey two years ago that specifically picked on a company, and I'd never seen that before. So, this was a, a a developer survey like any other and sort of compiled and saw that a lot of them when they were when you get to the specific questions of what what is it that upsets you Facebook was the one they mentioned all the time it was things are changing and the documentation is not changing uh, the documentation was never accurate and and it's changing right they're not telling us about these changes a lot of it was changes changes and that comes down to the process that Facebook had and I uh, They've actually, believe it or not, gotten a lot better in the last couple of years, and a lot of that comes down to their communication, which I'll kind of talk about a little bit later. And then this one here, this was, this was my most popular tweet from last year, and uh, Visify showed me that, and I said, that's, that's really great that my most popular tweet was actually written by someone else. <laughs> but I think the, the engagement you see in that, in that tweet really sets the stage here. Now, some people had a problem with this, with this quote, said uh, marketing and, and their marketing fluff needs to get away from documentation, which is you know, just the facts. And I think John backed it up by saying, it's not that you need marketing fluff in your documentation, but that there are entire departments dedicated toward marketing, and you're lucky if you have a couple of people doing documentation. So he said the resources need to be allocated, you need to give it the attention it deserves. And so today, I'm gonna to talk about the three C's that I've identified by seeing thousands of APIs and seeing good and bad stuff. And these fit into the three categories, clarity, cost, and community. And you'll see my definition of documentation is very broad. So the first one here, seems like a simple one, right? Developers can actually find their way to the portal. If I had to guess of the 9,000 APIs in the programmable web directory, not even half of them can you find in any global navigation, whether it's the bottom, like uh, 
like GitHub does here, or bam, some of them put it all the way to the top, especially those where it's the API is the product. The portal is the, is the important place. This is how we get our developers to the documentation. And then this one might also be obvious to some of you, but again, not even half would have a complete AI reference. So a place where you can see, and you know, we can all talk about the ways that these are organized, but a place where you can see all the different things that you can do with an API. And then developers explore the API. There was a, the, one of the lightning talks before the snacks mentioned this, where you type in the, the different things that, uh, that you can do, and then you see the results. Now, I, I played high school basketball, and uh, I took maybe a little bit more of an academic approach to basketball, so I ha actually had a book about basketball. Um, and one of the things I remember from that book, it said that it used to be that a point guard, if they dribbled between their legs, they were just hot-dogging. And now it's become where, if you're a solid point guard, you need to be able to do that. I think the same is, the, is true about API exploring. Being able to find a way for, to decrease that time to hello world, the time that it takes for a developer to start up and get that hello world out to see how this API works. And then using client libraries. This is, again, this is going to the developer, going to their workflow, and organizing it. And Twilio actually has uh, multiple libraries for each language, each with its own little specific area. You see a Joomla and, uh, and a Drupal, and then a PHP main one that's, uh, that's maintained by Twilio. So going to the developer with the API libraries. And as part of that, uh, sample code and example apps. And Stripe does a great job with their sample code saying, we're going to show this in a couple of different popular languages. And de a developer can go, highlight, copy, put it into their code, and get going. So again, decreasing the time to hello world. And then finally, in, in Clarity, uh, also in that survey that called Facebook the worst API ever, uh, people, developers mentioned that everyone has a different way of authenticating. Why can't we just have, have a same one? Well, there is a standard, and, I, and uh, in some circles, this would be a, a deep debate about whether there is one way to use OAuth. But there is a standard. And look for those industry best practices um, where you can decrease what you need to actually explain to a developer with your documentation. And there's a great post actually on Programmable Web by Peter Grunbaum of SDK Bridge where he talks about how to document OAuth APIs. So now cost. What does cost have to do with, with documentation? Well, I think it's still about communicating what you need to communicate. And I think there are also, as you'll see, many different ways to think of cost. So there's the, the simple way, how much does it cost to use it? And can you find a way to easily see it? Like uh, SendGrid, which is a uh, email as a service. Is there a, a pricing grid for, for developers? You'd be surprised at how many, especially enterprise services that cost money that you can't find out how much money it costs. Rate limits are another type of cost because that's potentially my development time. If I can't use your service beyond 1,000 calls a month, that costs me the development that goes up into that if I'm going to need more than 1,000. And Google does a great job with their developer console of showing rate limits very clearly on the right side and having a way to be able to request access, request more if you want it, and you can see it here in your own personal dashboard. And actually, on the bottom one there, you can even see pricing. So you can go and find out, OK, if I, if I need to use above that 10,000 requests a day, what's it going to cost me between 10,000 and 2 million? And sort of along the lines of the rate limits is the terms of service, which are <laughs> I did, 
that is the first time I've ever had anyone <laughs> cheer in terms of service. Uh, I ha having, having API-specific terms of service <laughs> and explaining them hopefully in a clear way so that developers know what costs there are there. Do I, am I restricted to non-commercial apps, for example? That's a true cost and one that needs to be communicated. And this is just showing that Zillow has a whole section for the API stuff with terms of use specifically in uh, the API terms of use specifically. And now one way you can offset the cost for developers is to give them money. Not everyone can do this, but if you have a way that you could set up an affiliate program, then that decreases the cost for developers. They're going to find your API all that more irresistible. Amazon, of course, a, a really big example of that. Anytime you're selling something at all, there's a good possibility there. And along those lines, helping your developers to find work. If you can't pay them money directly, find them someone who will. And PayPal was one of the first who did this, who set up a developer network where you could search for people and you could find people who can implement something for you so that you don't have to be a developer to be able to use an API. So that's clarity and cost, and now to community. And I've seen some pieces of this in, uh, in the talks today, and I was really, I was happy to see that. Uh, pieces of, of that kind of flow of taking feedback from the people who are using it. Certainly need a place to do that. API forum is a great place. You can take it even a step further. This is one of the things Facebook did after they were called the worst API, was they went to Stack Overflow. They went to developer. And they said, let's answer questions here. Let's direct people to this resource. API blog, Facebook also uh, started a series called Operation Developer Love, which one might argue with the, ch the choice of the name, but <laughs> it's a weekly post where uh, they show off developers, they talk about changes that are coming, and have a way to be able to communicate those changes, be able to test against those changes. And uh, then I think this is a great example, YouTube showing off YouTube developers. And uh, Facebook does that as well. There are many who kind of raise, raise up their developers, shine a spotlight on them. And then as part of going to where they are, Go to Twitter, go to Facebook, wherever people are talking about you the same way Facebook did with, the, with Stack Overflow. And hey, the Twitter API has one. I don't know if they're listening, but they're there. And then putting a face to it. And I think that this is something, uh, certainly if you have uh, forums, you can do this. But I think this is something that could be, even be done in any documentation is put a little avatar there of the, the person in the organization who owns that piece of documentation, or the last to edit it, or some way to put a face to it. Even if this is all internal facing, uh, being able to see that there are real people behind this documentation, real people behind this forum. And then along the lines of shining a spotlight on your developers, an app Yellow Pages of Canada does a really good job of this, of highlighting their developers. And they even, uh, the Hackathon will take a great app and invest real money, well, real Canadian money, into that app. <laughs> and uh, so, that it, so that it lives beyond that hackathon. And then finally, getting out to events. Like I just mentioned, the Yellow Pages does hackathons. Uh, get out to those, be, really take advantage of that face-to-face, -face, true face-to-face -face interaction with the people who are using your product. And if you're like someone like Evernote or Twilio, which hits uh, a certain level of usage where you want to create your own events, that's another great route to take um, to be able to really get together your community and gather them 
and learn from them and create better documentation for them. So those are the three C's that I've seen from thousands of APIs. Clarity, make sure you communicate as clearly as you can. Cost, you want to tell everyone the, all sorts of costs, not just money costs. And then community, do what you can to have that be a feedback loop. Thank you very much.